hey it's Meg welcome back to my channel so today's junk journal with me we're gonna do days 27 and 28 for the junk journal July prompts so the first one we're gonna do is poetic and I'm just flicking through some of my previous journals here because something I like to do is find like phrases or words within old books and kind of assemble them together a little bit like poetry and have them be just a sentiment on the page or something that I can uh, use as a theme for my page and so that's what I decided to do for this page so I was just looking at some of my previous ones just for a little bit of inspiration you know to kind of get the the cogs going and then I decided to start building the base of the page first so that I had a focal point so that when it came to adding in whichever phrases I decided to add uh, that they would have something to uh, focus on almost and so I didn't pre-plan what I wanted to cut out from the book pages oftentimes what I'll do is just like grab some at random and then just almost skim read it and just see what pops out to me uh, so oftentimes it's not actual poetry uh, it doesn't always make sense it's more just like I pick words that kind of have a little bit of a flow or a sentiment and if you watch when I put this one together it's quite funny because I actually misread it so there was a phrase where it was basically going on about something to do with like failing or so I thought and in the context of what I was cutting out where it's like oh you know being what you intended to be but like the fail I thought oh that's perfect it's kind of like uh that like imperfection uh sort of vibe um but it actually said frail so I had to go back and change it and put something else uh in its place because I I didn't mean frail um and and that just made no sense so you know I'm all for it not being like you know proper like wordsmith like type poetry um, but I did want it to sort of make sense so yeah it's not perfect like I always end up adding bits and then taking bits off um, of the different phrases I normally do kind of like three or four and sort of cut them up depending on the width of the page that I'm working with so especially if there's like a certain word that I want to emphasize from it I'll sometimes like cut that out and have it in isolation so that it stands out on the page but there's no real like rhyme or reason to this it's just a fun technique that I like to do to have like found poetry almost uh, within my journals and it reminds me of the blackout poetry uh, as well where you just black out the words with a like sharpie or a pen that you don't want to see so then the ones that you do pick stand out so it's a bit like the opposite of that because I'm cutting them out instead and just taking uh, the phrases and I also decided to pick where it says introduction here and have that be almost as like a little bit of a title for this page and just to have the text be a little bit bigger because that's the only thing when I'm picking out from a book normally it's like you know regular like print size and so it can actually be quite small which is fine when I'm working in smaller journals like I normally work in sort of around about like the a6 size so it, it fits but if you're working in anything bigger they can feel a little bit smaller uh, unless you've got like I don't know a large print book or just larger text in general uh, maybe if you're picking from like headings or titles things like that but for just regular text uh, yeah that's the only thing it is a lot smaller so I tend to include this more as something that's a little bit detailed so what I decided to do was have this be on the left hand side and then I was looking at the space on the right hand side of the page and I thought well that's like empty but I'm not sure what to put there so I was thinking about it for a while whilst I was like assembling these words and thinking about what I wanted to do and I just decided to do like a leaf pattern sort of going from the left hand side over to the right hand side of the page and have it like carry through and I just used one of my uh, green coloured pencils to get the initial shape on and it fit the page I think because it was matching like the scrapbook paper that I had but it wasn't really like standing out in the way that I wanted it to so 
I thought, well, maybe I can bring in some like white acrylic paint or something to help the uh, coloured pencil to stand out by pushing back some of the background. And so you'll see in a second after I've drawn the uh, leaf shape, I end up adding this white acrylic paint. And you know when you've decided to do something and you can just tell as soon as you start doing it like that it wasn't the thing you needed to do on the page but I was in too deep at that point I needed to commit and continue so uh, I kept adding it to the bottom of the page thinking this isn't what I wanted it to look like but it's what it looks like now and I guess we're just gonna have to uh, work with it and you know see what I can do so I ended up like trying to make the leaves darker and things like that and I I was really ending up like not liking what I'd done and I just thought why have I done this to the page like the poetry side on the left hand side was fine and this leaf pattern that I had in a moment I was just like why why did I do that I was trying to fill up the space and it just didn't it didn't work like I normally like the leaf patterns but I wasn't uh, finding that it fit with everything else that was going on the page. I don't know if it's because the background was too busy or it was like too big or it felt just like random on its own. Maybe I needed like, uh, you know, three of them on different parts of the page. Maybe it was just because I had the one giant uh, sort of leaf going across the page and it felt a little bit lost and so when I was thinking about what I could do because I thought well you know I can't uh, take the page out because we're now on the reverse of the uh, no so journal so in a way that's a little bit more pressure because you know I want to make sure that I'm I'm not spoiling anything that's on the other side of this page so what I end up doing is something that you'll probably think at first like oh that's like a bold move to do on a page when you don't like it um, and I I wasn't sure at first whether I was actually going to, to add this to the page. I was thinking about it and I thought mm, this could either be something that is a really good move or something that will spoil the page even more like I will hate it even more than I already do like you can see as this white paint's going on it just it doesn't look the way that I thought it would in my head and so yeah I kept adding it I thought well let's see if we still like it once it's been added across uh, different parts of uh, the page like on the book paper and on the brown paper and I was I was even committing by adding it to like a second leaf and going along um, the edges there and, and cutting them out and I think there was just not enough contrast on the page as I was adding this so yeah I was definitely panicking as I kept adding more and more white paint to this page before I decided to stop because at first I thought well maybe I can add this like you know all the way around the leaf but I just decided to try and make it look like I only intended to do uh, the bottom half and then yeah here I am trying to add a bit more I think just almost like form to them because they were feeling a little bit lost with all the white paint and then here it is I decided to come in with some ink and this is antelope brown and I was like debating whether to do this for a moment you can see I'm hesitating and this actually turned out a lot better than I expected it really gave the contrast and the lift to the page that I think it needed because the green uh, leaves were just feeling so like lost and like blended into everything so to have this as a contrast it really helped it stand out and I, I really love this shade of uh, the De La Rani inks um, it's more of a like green earthy brown um, rather than using you know say like a black because I think that would be very harsh uh, on, on the page so to have this like greenery um, sort of colour I think really worked for this page. Now it's definitely not one of my favourites but you know I was trying uh, something different and it actually made me think that I need to use my inks even more within uh, my pages because they do really add a nice lift to some of the pages when they feel a little bit busy and I want that like contrast and high impact on the page I think so yeah 
this was one that definitely I had to trust the process a little bit and it all sort of worked out in in the end and here's me covering up that uh, frail uh, word with something else for the final page for Poetic. Okay so for the next page that I'm doing our prompt is buttons and in an ideal world I would have been as prepared as I was for the petals prompt so for that one I pre-pressed some flower petals that I knew I wanted to use in the page and I really should have, you know, found some buttons that I could have repurposed and used for this page. Like that's what I had in my head when I put the buttons prompt into the list. I thought, perfect, I can have a three dimensional page. I can use some old buttons and, you know, stitch them into my page and that will add a really textured uh, element and something different to my collages. And then when I sat down to actually do the page, I thought, I don't have any buttons and you know I wasn't as dedicated to this uh, general challenge that I was going to take a button off something uh, that I already own so what I decided to do was instead make some of my own buttons so I did a bit of a like faux uh, DIY attempt at doing some buttons so I literally just took some uh, cardboard you could use like a cereal box or anything and then I decorated them layered them and poked in the holes so that it looked like a button. So the first thing that I'm doing here is I'm actually sewing up a envelope. It's just something that was packaging and I figured it would be good to have an envelope on the page so that I could have something to attach my button to that kind of made sense in the context of what I was doing. So adding a button to the uh, fold of the envelope so it looked like it was a closure. Now I could have made this like a tuck spot and pocket and used the button as a way of like closing the page but honestly I just didn't want to um, do something that involved with this page so this is just like a it's a faux button and it's also like a faux pocket so you know when you buy a pair of jeans and you go to put your hands in the pockets and the pockets don't actually exist even though you can see that they're there that's kind of the concept that I'm doing for this page you know there's the button it looks like you could open it but you actually can't I've uh, glued it and sort of stitched it so uh, yeah that's kind of the look that I've gone for for this page so I just cut out the uh, circles from some card as I said I just traced around um, my glue stick actually because that was the closest thing to hand that looked like it would be the right shape for a button and then cut them out. I added some collage onto the top of them so just some book paper to make them look a little bit more interesting and something I also did was used a coloured pencil just to add some shading and definition around the side of the button. You could probably do something with inks as well or maybe even paint just so that the button itself didn't look too flat and it gave it a bit more depth and dimension I suppose because I was trying to make this look not realistic but you know I did want it to sort of pop off the page a little bit so that's why I decided to embellish this and you could of course do like you know all sorts of different colours um, all sorts of different patterns. There's probably loads of fun ways that you can make these look even like real buttons. The name's escaping me but there's that clear stuff that you can use that adds like a raised effect and it's really annoying me because I've had it before. Is it like an accent or something? Glossy accents maybe? Let me know in the comments if you know what I'm on about but something like that would add a shine to a button like this and also give it a bit of um, a raised effect as well. I think it's glossy accents but I'm gonna have to go and google that after I've uh, <laughs> done this voiceover for this video. Um, but yeah so there's loads of different ways you can do the buttons and of course I did them in a neutral way in just a way that uh, fits the the style that I've been going for for this journal. And what I ended up doing was having a larger button and then a smaller button and layering them on top of one another just to create a bit more interest with the button that I was doing because aside from embellishing the envelope that was kind of the extent of the page like I didn't do anything too fancy it's got a uh, like tuck spot pocket space that I could add something into but I didn't decide to do anything for this page I might come back to it and you know add something in there but it was just fun to play around with this concept of 
making my own buttons and you know maybe it's something I might do for another journal page it could be even something cool for like a uh, closure I think for a journal page I know I've seen a few of those on other people's journals so yeah I haven't actually made my own uh, buttons before so yeah it was a fun uh, prompt to do that's for sure so I'd love to know have you included any real buttons within your pages do you know the story of the buttons like is it something you've collected is it something that you just found at the bottom of your sewing box uh, let me know because you know there's all sorts of different buttons uh, that you can include on page and yeah it was just fun to include this prompt because I haven't included something like this before so it's a nice way to add something that's three-dimensional to our journals and just something a little bit different you know pushing us out of our comfort zone I know it's nothing new but it's so good to see you we do this every day and I'm still so amazed by you So hold me tight through the night mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just us two Aside from adding some finishing touches here to the page with little bits of washi tape and things just to add some colour like this pink one here because the page was quite neutral, that is pretty much everything that I did for these prompts of poetic and buttons so I hope you enjoyed journaling along with me as always and I will see you in the next one. <laughs>